Affinity Photo can be used to create all kinds of unique designs. Using brushes. Brushes can be modified in countless ways. This one just created from a very basic brush. So let's just remove that and then go to the paintbrush tool. So here's the paintbrush tool. You can set the color, go for reds, greens, blues, etc. And I'm going to use analog ink. Now I quite like to turn the wet edges off. We'll just turn that off and then just simply apply it. And just go like that. Just drag that down and double click and then change the color. And I'm just going to go for a variety of colors. So greens, blues, and of course you can create, and you can use other brushes as well. Don't have to use this one. And then you also change the flow. So you can set that to 100%. Personally, I always prefer it set 100%. And then again, change the color. And I'm just going to go for a red there. And then maybe a blue. You can see with the flow turned up to 100%, you can't see through it. You can actually see through it when it's set less than that. And I don't want that. So again, just go for blue. And now you created this complex brush. And it could be anything. But I've just gone for sort of like straight down, put a bit of waving, a bit of unusual brush strokes, but it's a mix of different designs there. Once I've got that, go to layers, because I want a 3D effect. So just go here, select the layer, go to effects down the bottom, click there, and then go for 3D. And you can of course vary it, just change that, increase that. Some values will work better depending on the size of the document, but you can just modify it. You will see at a certain point where you think, you know what, that looks just right and then maybe change other settings, profiles, etc. But also, if you want, you can just add some shadow as well. Something like that, and click close. So you've got that brush. Well, this is a great start point. And you could, of course, add multiple brushes simply by going here, move tool, selecting it, and then duplicating that design to create a slightly more complex design. But I'm just gonna go with that. Then go to layer, and down here to rasterize and then turn that off and rasterize so all the effects everything all set as this pixel layer which i can now turn into a brush and you can see go down here and you notice i've got lots and lots of different brushes and with that you can go down here and new brush from selection that's the right side menu new brush from selection and you can create design like that and you can use that brush, create a variety of designs. But also what you can do is you can apply effects to these brushes. So, but I like to actually add lots and lots of brushes. I don't know how much impact this will actually have on your version of Infinity Photo. Perhaps maybe, obviously create it in a category that you can remove, delete. It's actually quite hard to delete the brushes. I wish there was a fairly easy way of doing that. Then go to filters, and then you go down here and distort and twirl. You can also, of course, use maybe a liquefied persona. That's a great one as well for manipulating that. And you can see then you can create a lovely twirl design. I don't want it too extreme, something like that. Just a nice twirl design. And of course, you can manipulate that further, maybe change the position, of the origin there, and click apply. Once you've got that, you can then just add it as a brush. So brushes, right side menu again, go down there, new brush from selection. And then you can see you've got your brush there. Well, double click, and then you can see your design there. Now it's applied just as your basic brush setting. There's nothing changed there. But what you can do, you can go here to spacing, and you can see you can then set it. And now you can see that sort of curve in there. Now, of course, you could create much larger design, maybe make the actual initial, I say, straight line a bit thicker than that the one that i actually created the earlier design probably was slightly thicker than this but still let's just go with this and what you can then do go to dynamics and then you can change this the size just if you want you can also go over here and you can go full cycling and again size jitter and then you can see you get these weird ripple designs you can create a variety of different designs click here and you can modify that by just changing this Quite often, just one of the standard profiles probably works even better. You can create something very quick like that. Also, you can go to a huge jitter, and then you can see then by pushing that 
and random, you get all these different colors, which you might want. So let's now just go to here and just remove this. When you actually use another tool, you'll notice the brush disappears here. It's not gone, so you can just go over here, select here, the paintbrush tool. And now you can apply it. Now, I don't like the size. The size is a bit too big. Maybe go for 390. Let's just apply it. And you can see then, as you apply that, you get that effect. Now, one thing you'll notice, and I really don't like this feature, which I often say don't set wet edges, seems to ignore it because <laughs> wet edges is still on. So it's one of those things set to off, and that actually does set it. Now, if you apply it, because at the moment you can see, you can actually see through it. Personally, I prefer it not. So you can actually not see through it, which I prefer. Unless you put, obviously, opacity into it, transparency, etc. You can see you can create that sort of design. But dynamics, just go there again, and then go to rotation jitter. And you can set it to the max, 100% random. And that creates a lovely sort of weird sort of design, which you can, of course, fill the entire screen with that. But you can also go to random and cyclic and you get something like that. And again, you can still modify the setting. Uh, just go here and you can go to, again, standard profiles and you can click there. You can see you can create a variety of designs. I'm going to go with that one, the one that's second profile there. Now with that, I can again change this. I can just push this down a bit and close. And then you can apply it and you can see the result of that. But also what you can do, I would suggest one feature that I've noticed when you put too much sometimes into these brushes, quite like to, if you're happy with the brush, I always like to right click and then duplicate the brush. Some weird reason, when I go back to it later, sometimes the brush seems to change this one. If you're using it, if you just leave that there, seems to, I don't know, this is just an odd quirk that I've noticed. Right, once you've got that, you can now go up to symmetry. So click there. Make certain the lock is on. I always prefer that. So it's actually central and it's frozen there. So you can't move it by accident. And go with four and mirror. And now you can apply it. Now you can see because the brush is really large, it, obviously I'm going to reduce it down. But you can see you can create a design. I quite like four or eight. You can call set it to greater, but I think sometimes it doesn't look so great. Just ends up really quite a mess. But I think that looks quite decent. And you can then, again, just go to the center there and just drag outwards, obviously click a diagonal. And you can do all kinds of combinations. And you can see you end up like that. Maybe finish further out. If you go inside sometimes, the one right the center always seems to be a bit of a mess. So I prefer just to start there and then go out, then go out, go out. Of course, it's then the symmetry effect is applied. And you can just add some more just there and so on. You can see you can create a variety of different designs just by using that brush. And exactly the same as before, you can then go here, double click, and you can change it. So again, dynamics, go here to paintbrush short is selected, go to the rotation jitter. So you can see what happened there. Weird, isn't it? Rotation jitter's gone. Cyclic. Don't know why it does that. Just very quickly, you can put it back to that, but it just seems to be a weird glitch. Click there and go there maybe, but you can always then tweak it. Now, sometimes it doesn't seem to lose it. I mean, I've got lots and lots and lots of brushes where the settings are perfectly okay and stay, but sometimes it just seems to lose them. Definitely seems to be a bug in 2.5. And then you can see you've got something like that. And then close again. Now, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but to me, it should remain. Those settings should not be lost. And then, again, you can go there and you can see then you get a different design. And this time, let's just double click again because I think the no, spacing set to 1%, just sometimes. I would prefer also if it was actually 0 0.1. That would be lovely. But again, you can see you can modify this, push it down and there. And then you can apply it again and you can see you can create a variety of different designs very rapidly using this approach now of course i've used that that twirl design and i could have pushed it even further so let's just remove that and again let's just turn the symmetry off 
And with the paintbrush tool, you can apply it and create another one. So I can select any other brush, maybe this, Comic G, Comics G pen, as it says there. And again, just apply, and you can see now I can create that. And again, just go here, go with yellow, close. Now you might like to, and another option here, is to actually apply the th actual 3D effect just to this and then duplicate it. You can do that. So go down here, effects. Now, of course, if you duplicate it, it's going to look much the same each time. So you can then make an out outer shadow there and then go for 3D there. And maybe create ones with slightly different ones. So you could create this, click close, create another layer. So go to layer and new layer and you can then apply another brush. So maybe apply it like that. Maybe a different angle, maybe crossing over there. That's always a possible. So again, go down here to effects, click there, go to 3D and change the radius. And you can vary, you've got profiles. So you click there, and maybe go for it like that. So you don't have to have them all the same. And again, out of shadow. So just click there and again, radius, offset, intensity, and click close. And you could duplicate that. So those two layers, maybe create two or three of them. And you just do that. And you can always recolor them. I mean, it's always an option. You can simply just go here to the pixel layer here and then go click here. And you've got here color overlay. So you can obviously don't go for that, but maybe go for red. Maybe go here with blend modes. Just try out different ones, overlay and so on. So you can create a variety or difference and so on and close. So once you've got those, simply select all of those. Again, right click and group, then go to layer and down to rasterize. So once you've rasterized it, you've lost that effect. It's all combined into a single design. And then you can manipulate this. And again, you could save this one. So this brush, simply go over here to brushes. Again, right side menu, new brush with selection. Just add it there. I like to store it away or save it to the assets panel. It's another great option. Just go to window and assets to save it to that. Well, once you've got that, again, do exactly the same as four. Or maybe go to distort and deform. So you can deform it first. Now, let's just quickly deform that just slightly. Yeah, so it's not such a perfect sort of straight down. And then distort that, maybe push there and push it in because that you can distort it by just putting those pins further out, squeezing that in and then apply. And then go to filters distort and twirl. Now, don't, don't want it that extreme, but maybe just slightly twirl. You just want a fairly substantial, I think. This looks much nicer if you've got a fairly substantial there. Obviously, that's going to get slightly thinner. And click apply. Exactly the same as before. Go to brushes, right side, new brush with selection. Now you've got that. You can see you've got that design there. Now you don't have to delete it. It's always quite, just simply Deselect it there. You can always make the layer disappear simply by doing that. Though sometimes you can have a tendency to accidentally select it still. So you can still select it, which is, you could of course lock it as well. That's another option. Then double click there, and then you've got your brush. And again, change the spacing. You can see now you've got this lovely end effect, sort of like a thicker sort of wedge at the end of that brush stroke. And you can then go here, Modify dynamics, size just again, or maybe just keep it like that. I always quite have no problem with that. Rotation jitter again, you could get a nice furry brush very quickly using this approach. Again, press B and you can try it out. And you can see then, get that. Again, wet edges. I always love turning it off. Don't know, it keeps reappearing. And then you can see then you get this real intense sort of 3D. I mean, that's pretty weird effect seaweed like a yellow blue odd seaweed effect i would say that looks like but you can still modify it further of course you can just simply just go over here and you've got your rotation jitter cyclic and you can see you get effect like that and again modify it here by using profiles a variety of different options there as well as of course simply just clicking here and you can see just tweaking that to create even more unusual brush strokes huge jitter if you want 
get a lovely randomised colour. Again, sight click. Or go with something like that. So you've got a lovely sort of blues. And, and again, always click here if you want to change colours. And click close. And now, let's just resize that. And like like that. And you can see then you've got another design, which you can, of course, apply multiple times. But also what you can do, you've got options here, blend mode. So you can just go down here, maybe go for hard mix. Hard mix is always a good one. So you get a real sort of unusual coarseness, I think, to that. And then undo that. But again, symmetry, just turn that on. Lock and four and mirror. And with that, you can then, ooh, let's just change blend mode. Don't want that. Go with normal. Again, maybe reduce it down. I always feel it's just a bit too big. And then you just apply it in the center. And again, you can see as you just, I'm using an art pad and pen, but you can, I can use a mouse as well. Mouse, just as reasonable. And you can see as you do that, you get that sort of design very rapidly. All kinds of unique sort of pattern designs, which could be used for wallpaper, <laughs> whatever. Whole range of options there. I mean, that would be a pretty garish wallpaper, I would say. Or maybe tapestry designs, whole range of knockings, I guess, you could use with this sort of style to create designs like that. Well, hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. And I just suddenly thought, also another thing you could do, you could produce this maybe on a layer as well. And then, of course, you can combine those. So layer and new layer. And then, of course, game with paintbrush tool, you can create another design on top of that, like that. You've got two there. And of course, you can then go here, blend modes, and you can run through blend modes and maybe try and see like that, or resize it and so on, or maybe duplicate that design and so on. You can see there's a load of possibilities just by using layers as well. Anyway, bye.